Good morning YouTube, it's the Lofty Biker here. I've just come down to Lana in southwest Cornwall to see Terry at Cornwall Kawasaki. See if I can get a bike to borrow for the day. Here we are. Okay, so we're back. Uh, strange thing, glad to see Terry. He said, sorry John. Got no demos. Struggling to get bikes. Kawasaki have stopped production. Something to do with bits in silicon chips I can't get. So I've come a ride back up to Damrose to see if Mark's got anything for me. I'll let you know in a minute. Well, good morning, YouTube. The Lofty Biker here, John Lofty. I've just called into Demerals to see Mark, and uh, he's very kindly lent me the 2021 Suzuki 1050XT. It's been a long time since I've ridden V Strom. So when he said I've got the V-Strom, I, I thought, yeah, superb, that'll do me. Okay, so first impressions. Ergonomically, sound, comfortable. Mirrors, superb. Seat, hard. Whether it'll be comfortable or not, we can never tell. Everything seems to fall to feet and hands quite easily. Drops into corners nicely. Picks up well in second gear. So let's talk about the dashboard. We've got a big gear selector in the, on the side, surrounded by the taco. There's a temperature gauge attached. There's also modes a b and c traction control looks like one two and maybe three and then we've got abs one and two so you can actually alter them using this mode button on the left hand handlebar grip that is traction control i believe this hill start on the top right we've got the speedometer with the fuel gauge underneath it it looks like it's got six bars, flashes when you get down to one bar. 130 mile on the Odo, 124 mile, too empty. That's on trip A. The clock's there, 11.37, and we're showing 13 degrees. Everything's there that you need. We've noticed just here to the left hand side there's a socket i'm not sure whether it's a usb or a cigarette style i'll leave the indicators on to see if the self cancel they appear not to be so i'm going to cancel them anyway So what exactly we got? 1050cc. I believe it is the same actual engine as the old bike. But they've given it a bit of a revamp. And the main thing they've altered is the styling. They've given it this sort of retro styling, 70s styling, where the beak has been incorporated into the tank. I quite like it actually. I'm not so sure on the yellow. I think the red looks quite nice quite stylish it is still the old v-twin that's been going since back in the TL days I'll talk about power and everything when we pull over but it's a thousand cc or 1050 cc v-twin once you get it ticking over the engine smooths out a bit you do get a bit of a bit of slop at low revs if you're in the wrong gear which is typical 
of most V-twins. Um, the screen, I'm not sure, I think you have to dismount and go around the front to adjust it. I've just left it in whatever it was in. I think it's the lowest setting. And to be fair, although it's fairly windy, I'm not getting any buffeting. Holds the line fairly well. Yeah, not bad at all. Nice big wide angle bars. Big wide foot pegs. The brake and the gear lever are easily to foot. So in general, first impressions are, it's a nice little bike. But to be fair, it ought to be. They've been developing the V-Strom over a number of years. So it does tick most boxes. The main box it does tick is price. It's not got all the fancy um, gadgetry and modern super, super techniques that some of the bikes have got. But it's a lot less money. Anyway, I'm going to turn left here onto one of my favourite roads. The road from Roach across to Padstow. I'll get round the corner, I'll give the brakes a bit of a test. If there's anybody about, it makes it easier. Oh, found neutral there. So here we are. Fourth gear. 45, 47 mile an hour. Yeah, the front brakes are superb. Very, very nice. Same again. Fourth gear, 45, 46 mile an hour. Mm, the back brakes are on a lot of bottle and I can feel it locking up. Whether it's because the traction control or the ABS is set wrong to suit it. Um, I'm not overly impressed with the back brake. So let's settle into a few twisties. Caught that neutral again. I'm not quite used to the spacing on this gearbox. I like the steering. The steering's very nice. I don't think it's got the mid-range gun that a, a 1200 Boxer engine's got. It just seems slightly ponderous. It's up to 60 mile an hour national speeds in no time at all. Yeah, the brakes are pretty good. Engine braking's very good. Unfortunately, the sun's gone in a little bit. Such a shame, it was so sunny at six o'clock this morning. Anyway, I'm catching the Ups man up. It's not the Upsman. I saw the gold lettering, I thought it was the Upsman. It's Ellis Wines. See if I can get the right gear now. Nice clear bit. All clear. Yeah, it's got plenty of poke. One thing I notice is there's no quick shifter. Whether it's an optional extra on this model, I don't know. But we just slow down to 30 mile an hour during through the little village. It's got a nice throaty engine noise without being too loud. Whether a nice aftermarket cannon just release a little bit more that's where you notice it when you're in third gear at 
45-50 and you pull the throttle back, it's just not... I know I would gel with this bike and I know I would enjoy this bike if I had it for the period, but um, if this was just a test ride, I don't know, it's, it's just, there's little things that just aren't quite so intuitive as other bikes. So I'm going to find a place to pull over and have a little walk around and talk about it. So I'll see you in a minute when I'm away from these two vehicles. Good morning YouTube, the lofty biker here, just to do a little bit of walk round on the Suzuki V-Strom XT 1050. Just picked this bike up from Damerals, I'll swing the camera round and let you have a look at it. Up close, this is the screen adjuster, it's just a simple flip over and push it up and down. You cannot do it while on the go. Radial brakes, very nice. 19 inch tubeless, rudging running Bridgestones. Crash bars already fitted. Big bazooka. That is huge, isn't it? We've got hangers here. It is a 17 rear. No auger or anything fitted. Okay, so the spec. Two models, V-Strom 1050, V-Strom 1050 XT. This is the XT. The start at 9999, so it's under 10 grand for the basic model. For this one, you're paying 11,300 pounds. So let's have a look at the seat height. 850 millimeter seat height. Curb weight of 247 kilograms. It's 105 brake horsepower, throws out 100 newton meters. They reckon you can average 57 to the gallon. It's got a six speed constant mesh gearbox, and of course, it's a V twin, four stroke double overhead cam. Discs front and rear, and I believe it's got a slightly different uh, suspension on this. Oh no, it's not. It's Conventional vertical, preload, no fancy gadgets whatsoever. I'll just show you the dash. There we go. All there is the mode buttons, normal indicator horn. Start stop, hazard warnings, cruise control. Fuel tank is 20 litres. Okay, so we get the seat off, turn the key, lift up. Not a lot of room, maybe your sandwiches in there, a puncher outfit, maybe a bag of chips. There's another parallel, that is a cigarette type. So. This is some sort of adjuster kit underneath the seat, whether it's for raising it up or whatever. I'm not actually sure. I didn't really ask a lot about the bike. So there we have it, the 1050 XT. Okay, YouTube, so we're back. I've just knocked the cruise control on. Took a bit of while to get used to. We're in a national, in fifth gear. Okay, don't pull out on me. Thank you. So I've just pulled over. I'm going to have a look at the screen. So, flip, slide up. Flip down. 
Easy peasy. Now that is easy. Away we go. So the cruise control. There's a button on the right hand side. You push to activate it, to switch it on. Then on the left hand side, next to the mode button, there is a plus and a minus. You just push the one closest to you, it says set. Just give it a little dink and you're in. Now to control the speed, you use the plus and the minus tab. So just tap it down. So we go from 51 to 47. So if you want to speed up a little bit, just tap it up. Yep, that works quite well. I'll just flick it off. I do believe you have to be in fourth gear doing 30 mile an hour and it will automatically extinguish itself at 100 mile an hour. Take a left here. You have noticed a few times when you want to sneak it into first from second you have to be quite positive otherwise you get a false neutral. It does actually, well not a false neutral you get, you actually get neutral. There we are in second. The steady is very nicely on the back brake. Just goes to show that not always your first impressions are the best. The more I'm riding this bike, the more I'm starting to feel gelled with it. Seat's a bit hard though, I will say that, but you'd have to take it on a proper run to find out. Sometimes hard seats tend to be better the longer you're on them. But can't fault the handling. I'll just slow down for the dog walkers. The one dog looks more like a horse. There we go. Fueling's very good. High mode, no problems whatsoever with fueling. Just slow down here, there's a caravan park. And we'll come back out onto the main road and head back towards Damrose. I will say, when you think that this is 105 and the Africa Twin is also 105 I think the Africa Twin does feel a little bit peppier anyway first gear let's go yeah it's pokey enough I think if you went out with the lads 
or even the lasses I don't think you'd have a problem keeping up it gets you up to legal speed limits very quickly yeah it overtakes in a doddle the brakes will stop you I believe it's got an IMU on the traction control which is new for this model anyway I've I've been on it a while now with a screen in the higher position and uh, I think it's pretty good actually I I do think it's a better screen than the Africa Twin it's certainly a better screen than my RS so when you look at it 11,300 pounds on the road these are a good buy. I suppose what you've got to say is when you put it against the class leader, the GS, or the nearly class leader, the Multistrada, when they come equipped, you're talking 20 odd grand a bike. Whereas on this, 11,300. Cracking bike. Anyway, we're nearly back at Dam Rolls. As I say, I'm 70 mile an hour here on the dual carriageway. No buffeting whatsoever with the screen in the high position. Very, very pleased. If you're in the market for a good value adventure bike, I wouldn't look no further. The Triumphs are dearer than this, miles dearer, even the 850 is dearer than this. You are getting a 1050 V-Twin with proven technology and the good thing about Suzuki's is they don't break they just don't break they're unbreakable so here we are back at Dam Rolls I'll say thank you Mark for lending me the bike I've really enjoyed it slow speed works easy just put it back here I've put some petrol in for him, so whoever has it next. So, this is the lofty biker saying, ta-da for now, ta-da.